Hey folks, welcome back. Now, before on the channel, I opened and unboxed this uh, Ancient Zone for Up Zone, and what this is is pop-up terrain. So this is terrain for like skirmish games like Warhammer 40k, Pulp Alley, anything where you'd be kind of adding your own terrain onto the board. Pop-up book style terrain that you can put away on your shelf and, uh, and bring out and put together pretty quickly. There are a few little tabs and stuff to attach on some of them to get them to be kind of their, their perfect form. And uh, some of it's better than others, but I was really super impressed with it. So impressed. I went and got the rest of it. I wish I'd backed all of this because I would have gotten a lot of extra stuff. Uh, there was an obsidian zone piece that came with each of these that you backed on Kickstarter. If you're back, if you go and purchase any of these now, they're not going to come with that extra stuff that the Kickstarter uh, gave you. If you'd like a little, uh, a little preview of that, go back and look at the video for this. I think what I'd like to do is I'm going to unbox this stuff and go through it and kind of help you make a decision about uh, maybe if you would like one of these products, if you feel like adding this into your repertoire of terrain. Now, for some reason, I'm sort of addicted to buying terrain, I think. I, I buy all kinds of terrain for games that I really haven't played very much. There's always the promise of perhaps being able to play a nice skirmish game, like especially Pulp Alley. I know all the rules. I've got a bunch of painted miniatures. I've got a bunch of places to go uh, and visit with that. The only thing I really don't have are a bunch of pre-made scenarios, but those are available too. And it's pretty easy to throw together. I just need to play it. And to do that, I think I really need players. So I need to... <laughs> but I absolutely love putting together a nice board full of really cool uh, picturesque terrain. And I think that this is a really neat because... Uh, the biggest problem I have is I make all this terrain and it's really a pain to store, especially for something that I don't use very much. But this is quite different. I've got, uh, what I have here are three distinctly different areas that I can uh, set up as an environment. Uh, the other thing that I got is this. This is a, what is this called? Oh, this is the size expansion. And what this does, it has little panels that it will uh, kind of make it fit. Like I've got this four by four board, uh, which is kind of was kind of hard to lay out when I was doing it as an example. This is made out of essentially the same stuff, but has little smaller pieces that will let you interconnect these uh, these boards. It even can kind of make little transitional spaces between like this type of zone and another type of zone. So I've already been through all these boxes, but I thought, man, this would be kind of fun to share. So I'm gonna open these we're gonna take a look at them and maybe i'll lay them all out on my desk we'll just kind of see what's possible i've got two four by four foot tables it'd be kind of fun to see how much of it i can fill up all right so uh let's get this out of the way boop okay plenty of room now and uh let's start with the smallest one first so this is the size expansion and it has uh, a number of panels here to kind of make different scenarios uh, as far as table size for your games. Let's take a look inside. So these are th basically the same thickness as the boards on the different up zones that you'll see. They're nice and thick, pretty robust, uh, not warpy at all. I mean, they seem very well made. But you've just got kind of got the different panels and different different sides here. You can flip it one way or the other way. And we've got, I'm going to try to do this so I can put them back in too. Then we've got uh, another size that's kind of like this big and it's the same two patterns. Uh, you got the, you got the blocks on this side and like this more thatched look on the other side. Cobblestone maybe. That folds away. There's a little bit bigger panel. Uh, more small panels. Another small panel and a slightly different size panel. See, they're just all these different sizes, so you'll have what you need. All right. <clears throat> then we go a little deeper in here. And we've got some ancient zone looking panels here that fold out and some rubble so 
that's nice and big. And again, it's sort of, it's, it's very well made, very thick, very well printed. And this is a different size. It's the same thing, but a little bit different size, I believe, right? No? Okay, so yeah, that's just like the other one. So another one of those, that size. And this is a different size, right? These are solid panels that don't fold. We've got another, another size. <laughs> and is that more of those? Let's see here. Whoa. -ho. Okay. Yep, and it looks like the rest of this box is just these panels of this size here. So, you've got a bunch of different sizes of these panels. Some that fold away, some that are smarter or smaller. Lots of ways to expand your map and kind of get it to just the size that you need it. And that's the size expansion. Moving on, we have the Dungeon Zone. So the Dungeon Zone is, your, uh, is basically for dungeon crawler type scenarios. There, we've got a, an actual dungeon that you can assemble and build inside of here. Uh, the panels are really cool looking. Let's take a look here. Uh, this sheet here, which I have not punched out, but I'm going to soon, is, uh, is these are little uh, clips that can kind of hold these things together to kind of keep these different. Because uh, basically these are little pop-out rooms that'll, that you can form to make a dungeon like several different ways. And these will kind of hold those things together and kind of keep it all... Uh, together. I'm probably going to punch those out and put them in a plastic bag eventually. Alright, and here we go. So as I open this up, looks like uh, this is just like the size expansion, sort of. Another panel like that, but it's all uh, little tiles. And another one of those. And then I think we'll be getting into rooms here. All right, so here is a little dungeon room with a staircase. <laughs> I'll leave this out for a second and we'll play with these clips. So here is another room, and it is, oh, it's got some sort of crypt inside. That's pretty neat. So what you'll do is you'll fit all these together, and then you'll take these, uh, these little clips and kind of attach them like so. You got another one. You'll touch them like so, and that'll kind of keep these things together. Some of these have little doors printed on the inside. It might be kind of hard to see. Uh, some doors have uh, are printed on the inside, and sometimes they have openings, but you'll be able to attach them all together like that to make for a scenario. So I've got, uh, there's a bunch of Pulp Alley scenarios that use uh, little environments like this specifically, and I, I got this zone just to play those scenarios. <laughs> But if you play D&D &D or something like that, this would be kind of a, an interesting 3D way. And, and you can make them, you can reconfigure them because they, these rooms are all kind of individual. So you could you could rearrange this and reconfigure it any number of different ways to kind of make, uh, make your little zones the way you want them. All right, so let's see what else is in there. We got a crypt. We got some stairs. Oh, we have a dungeon. So there's a little cage. I think it'd be kind of hard to put somebody in there. 
it'd be neat if there was like a little door or a way to like put one of your characters in there. I mean, you could kind of slide them in, uh, in like that and then close it <laughs> and have somebody in there. But uh, yeah, there's a little dungeon for your dungeon crawler. Got to have an actual dungeon in there somewhere. And this looks like uh, just a small room. This is just a small room with a little printed on door here on the side. All right. Uh, half of the reason for doing this unboxing is because I really wanted to share with you all this cool stuff. And the other half is I needed a, a document so I'd know how to put it all back. <laughs> Anytime I pulled this out. All right. So here's a, here's a dungeon room with like a big open doorway on one side. And here is uh, another one of those. And what do we have here? Could it be another one of those? Looks like a lot of these uh, rooms are going to be like that with a big open space, which is kind of neat. It makes them like real uh, interconnected. Or it makes like, uh, instead of having one one space, you kind of have uh, one big room. Or you can make a few big rooms. This has two open areas. All right. And here's another one. I bet this is the same. Yep, two open areas. Another one with two open areas. Looks like the bulk of your dungeon, like all the, the, the kind of areas in between, the really interesting parts are like mostly here. And then you got a couple of, uh, of, of parts here that seem to have a, a lot of interesting things on them. All right, here we go. Yep, and another one with two open ends. Okay. It's all back in here real quick. On this side, oh yeah, we have some just little panels to kind of, uh, looks like fill in gaps. Are these all like that? Yeah, there's a whole bunch of these little things that could just kind of be like paths uh, in between the different rooms and stuff. All right. I think there's a, there's a lot of those. So a lot of uh, a lot of ways to connect these rooms and a lot of spaces here to make big long uh, walkways and choke points and areas to explore between the different places. All right, and right here we have our last stack of rooms. Let's see what we got. We've got a room that's open on uh, two ends like this. And again, huh. it's interesting. These are definitely made to bend and bend like that. I was wondering like how weak they would become over time, but I think these might be okay. Okay, these are all going to be sort of the open-ended, I bet, because they all seem very similar. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. These are all the same. Oh, that one's got three openings, so it's uh, kind of a big area in this one. I bet this is just like that. Yeah, it's another one like that. Very cool, okay. Meow. All right, I'll throw this back in there. And that is the dungeon zone. That was the box. Just one left, and that is the, what is this called? The cathedral zone, right? Yeah. The cathedral zone. The cathedral zone is a very Warhammer 40K gothic looking uh, area. And let's open this up and look at it. So my last unboxing, I didn't know what these were. It came, comes with these little plastic uh, 
they're, they kind of look like little plastic stickers. Now what these are, are uh, they're tabs that you can take and connect. So once these buildings come together, they're little tabs that sort of lock it into place. They keep it from flopping around too much because it's made to be able to collapse and come back and forth. So once you pull it out, you can take those tabs and kind of push them through and lock things into place. Now on the chance that those tabs get worn out over time, uh, you can replace the plastic on the end that kind of makes them a little bit more rigid. You can replace it with that and that's what these are for. Uh, this cathedral zone, much like the other one, when you fully, when it's set up as a 60 by 44 inch board. Um, yeah, so it's a pretty big battlefield, 60 by 44 inch. It doesn't do too well with odd sizes unless you like this 4x4, which doesn't seem that odd to me. But uh, uh, with these smaller sizes and stuff, you might need to, that expansion that kind of changes the different sizes around and adds the different boards. I think it makes a pretty big difference. What's funny is you can see the gap where one more of these boards would be if I'd gotten the Kickstarter version. I really wish I had. I should note that I don't know if they're going to make these again or if they'll be making more of these. Um, they had a really hard time getting these and stuff, so that's why I went ahead and, and picked it up while I could. All right, so the first thing we have is this, uh, these little set of crates, and this is another one. This is a good example of a tab. It's got a little tab here that goes in. So I'm going to get in here and give you a little up-close look at this doesn't fit uh, together super nice. Uh, that tab, I don't think, I think this tab is supposed to come up on this side. I think this tab is supposed to come up on this side and go around, but I couldn't actually get it to, to bend around just right. It's easier to come up this side and go over to here. So I might not have done it just right. But you know, from a distance and uh, as a representatory thing, I think it looks pretty cool. I'm gonna set this aside assembled because I really want to spread this stuff out and see what it's like all together. All right, so the next one we have here is another one. I'm just gonna set this over here. All right, and here we have another piece I'm going to go ahead and do these tabs and get it set. All right. And here we have another building. Here's kind of a closer look. Very gothic looking, kind of wrecked building. I've got the tabs all set. So this is, uh, this is the final product. This is what it would look like. As you can see, it's got a little grid on it. So if you do do, uh, if you do, do something that uses these grids to measure with, you've got little one inch grids all over. Like Dungeons and Dragons and stuff like that. Uh, let's see if this is the same. Yep, this is the exact same kind of building. So let me just set that aside for a second. What else do we got? So two of each of these other buildings that we got. And what's this? All right. Got another one with some tabs. Let's set that. All right, and here is this building assembled. It is pretty neat. Pretty neat. It bows up a little bit right here. Yeah, you get your minis are probably slide down in here a little bit. <laughs> Not perfect. I mean, it is paper, but uh, but it is interesting the way it comes together. And tabbed up, it does seem pretty sturdy, like overall. Uh, my guess is uh, this is another one of those. Yeah, exact same building again. So you get two of each kind of building. And it looks like we're down to our last two. So let's see what they are. This one is hard to open. Okay, this one is, oh, we got a little L-shaped. This one looks like it's going to connect real easy here. And what I'm doing when I do is I'm just fastening this tab right here. And that kind of makes it more rigid, kind of keeps it connected. 
these tabs probably would pop out, like just folding it away, but I think to be on the safe side, I would just pluck it. And uh, that would do a little bit better. Really nice, uh, really nice graphics on the board itself. And it's nice and thick. This is probably one of my favorite pieces out of this. They could have done a whole lot more of this and uh, less of the uh, more elaborate things. But I guess it's important too to have big intact structures that um, that uh, provide more cover and stuff. Yeah, very neat. And like I said, this is probably another one. Yep, it's another one. Looks good. But what's it look like all set up? Let's go ahead and put this together. Uh, we'll put together this cathedral zone. I'm going to push my two tables. I got two of these four by four foot banquet tables. That's what I use to play on. I want to push those two things together and just make as big an up zone as I can. That full, uh, that full 60 by 44 inch. So let's do that now. All right. So just for reference, this is a these two tables together make a four by eight foot table. And here is the terrain. I push the table so see there's a little bit of overlap. You can see with the color change there uh, between the two tables. But this makes an absolutely massive table. I do have one tab that I cannot get to stay. So uh, I'm gonna I'll mess with that a little bit more. All the rest of the tabs once they're once they're set in place, they seem to work just fine. There's a little bit, a couple little gaps. Here and there, I think this tab came out too. So obviously, you know, it's not perfect. Uh, depending on what price you get, it might be worth it to you or it might not be. But it's a very, very neat, picturesque terrain piece. With lots of stuff to explore. Lots of areas. There's a cat for scale. That's a pretty big setup. Be great to set up some 40k, some 40k stuff. Easily do a 40k battle on here. Very quick to take to the club and set up with some friends, pump out a 40k game, pack it all away. Uh, very little to break, actually. I mean, you could, of course, if someone falls on this or somebody crushes it with something, uh, it's uh, not going to be good. But it's pretty stable. I think this is the chunkiest. Uh, metal, all metal miniature I have, and uh, yeah, he's def definitely kind of endured the weight on some of these like thinner panels, but on these thicker ones, he's fine. Yeah, it'll hold the weight if you've got the old school metal ones, that might be a little much. <laughs> Maybe I could use him to like pin these things down. <laughs> yeah, you could safely, you could safely put them on a, a bunch of different things here, you could hop around jump on this titan yeah but this would be great especially if you got some big monsters and stuff and you want to have them tear through the city because this doesn't have a lot of like awkward uh stuff it's nice and flat is and all the details just uh printed on here so you know things aren't going to fall into little ditches and stuff that they're made yeah you can send your tarasque through uh through town here yeah, there's kind of no limit to the uh, to what you can do with this terrain. You want to fight some big monsters. You got two two uh, factions that want to fight it out, or maybe you've got an adventure that uh, that takes you to uh, some ruins of an of an old town or a place that's just recently uh, undergone a major tragedy. Maybe a giant monster just ripped through the place, and it's your do job to get in there and clean things up. Okay, folks, that's all I got for you today. I'll be back soon with more videos. If you'd like to see the Ancient Zone, you can click right here. And if you'd like to see more about that Tarasca I just showed off, you can click right there. Till next time, enjoy your games, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.